Hello, Dr. Berg here. I'm going to talk about diagnosing diabetes. Of course, I'm not telling you that you should go out and diagnose diabetes, but if you wanted some information on some of the values, blood test uh, to determine diabetes, that's what I'm going to talk about. Number one, um, and this is, I'm going to show you the values of the American Diabetes Association, okay? The same organization that recommends 40 to 60% of your calories should be carbohydrates. All right, which I'm just, I disagree with, okay? So, um, do a fasting glucose test. Uh, 126 is the cutoff point that you have diabetes, okay? If your blood sugars are 126 or greater, you have diabetes, okay? If it's 100 to 125, you have insulin resistance, which is the precursor, the thing just before diabetes. If it's 100 to 110, you're in the gray area, okay? If it's 100, you're normal. Now, if you didn't watch my other videos on what that means, that's one teaspoon of sugar per all of your blood. It's one and a half gallons, or usually like between one and a half or one and one third gallons of blood. So that one teaspoon for that much blood is very diluted. That's not a lot of sugar. An average American consumes 31 teaspoons of sugar. The American Diabetes Association recommends, I think it's like more than that. It's like 52, if I'm not mistaken, teaspoons of sugar within all the food. Not added sugar, but if you add in all the carbohydrates and things. Now, I, um, when I get the uh, feedback from a lot of people who are doing uh, ketogenic diets, intermittent fasting, and they're doing very well with their blood sugars, it, it comes lower than 100. It's like between 70 and 86. I consider this normal. I would use these numbers, 70 to 86. That's a half a teaspoon of sugar in all of your blood. And I'm not talking about from the diet, you're consuming a half a teaspoon of sugar. I'm talking about your body's ability to make its own sugar. It's called gluconeogenesis. Your liver can make it out of your own fat or dietary fat or dietary protein. You don't need sugar, okay? So that's that piece of data. Now you could still have normal fasting glucose and still have a problem with prediabetes if you have higher levels of ins fasting insulin. So like a high a fasting insulin would be 10, but there's a lot of people that have even 20, 30, even 40, which is very, very high, and have normal glucose because it takes time for it to show up uh, in the glucose in the blood, but it's happening throughout the body. It's happening with insulin. So you have insulin resistance at the cellular level and then it gets worse and then it starts to affect the blood sugars and then it creates more of a problem. So if you, if you have normal um, fasting glucose, that doesn't mean you don't have insulin resistance. You would want to check your fasting insulin test to see what that is. The point I'm trying to make is that you want to not rely on one test. You want to take several tests to really determine if you have this. Of course, you want to look at the symptoms too. Do you crave sweets? Oh, that's a problem. Uh, if you can't go from one meal to the next, that's a problem. If you get sleepy after you eat, that's another problem. That's all insulin resistance. So a tingling in the fingers, numbness in the hands, that's all uh, prediabetes or diabetes. So just don't go by one test. Then you have A1C, which again is an okay test, but there's variables that sometimes are not as accurate because it could be other factors relating to that, especially if they do the test and you're stressed or you drank coffee or you're dehydrated or you, you uh, exercised the night before or you didn't sleep, all these factors can affect the, the time that you took the test. So again, you know, take multiple tests. But the American Diabetes Association says you should be below six. Well, I think they recommend that because the amount of carbohydrates they're recommending, they're never gonna get it down below six. I recommend 4.6 to 5.3. That would be a normal, okay? You wanna keep it even below five. An, a really good test would be the post-meal glucose test. All right, so you just check your blood glucose two hours after a meal and use a glucometer, which is basically a glucose meter, and it should be between, it should be like less than 120. Of course, the American Diabetes Association said it's, it could be, it's normal if it's below 140. Okay, but again, because they're recommending so many carbs, um, they're just, they're, they're raising the values there. Um, so the point is that you would want to get it down below 140. That's a good test. So if you were to test all these, you have a real good indication to see if you have diabetes or not. So anyway, thanks for watching. Put your comments below.
Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.